So, my name's Daniel Stone. I work for Calabra Limited. We're all fantastic, and yes, that's part of our logo. Um, so, if you came expecting Wizzy graphical demos and stuff, this is not it, and you might probably want to go to a more visually interesting talk. Um, this is about as shiny as my talk gets, so sorry about that. <laughs> I picked the title in about three minutes. So basically, um, the whole thing behind my talk is every frame must be perfect. Um, I've been working on <coughs> consumer and mobile devices for the last four or so years of my life, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, <laughs> So the problem we have is that the desktop is allowed to look fairly rubbish. You're allowed to have incorrect frames. So when you're resizing, your windows are allowed to look horrible. It's, you know, it can look jittery. You're allowed to flush up random bits of colour. You know, you can bring a window up and it can go black and then be repainted. And this is alright partially because desktops are really fast so you don't entirely notice it and partially because people just have really low expectations of computers and I can't fault them. <laughs> but sadly, when you buy a consumer device like the wonderful Nokia N900, which you should all go out and purchase several of, um, <laughs> they're really, they're wonderful. They've got Jabber on them so you can wander around the conference like, hey, where are you? I'm in a hack room. Cool, so am I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you get a just a tiny little glitch or a visual artifact on that, it's really, really jarring because you don't expect that your phone does that. And the same goes for anywhere else where people tend to put apps like set-top boxes or anything people pay money for that doesn't look, that doesn't have a keyboard, basically. Um, and so, yeah, that causes, when you're working on them, product management come up and say, oh my god, this must be fixed next week. Never mind that it's going to take about four weeks, because, you know, it's a tiny flash of black, how hard can it be to fix it? Um, so that's the kind of thing that gets you critical, oh my god, we're shipping next week and we can't ship with this place. So maintaining X for a consumer device is really, really fun, and I can highly recommend it. <laughs> right, so the rough laundry list of problems. This has come from, um, yeah, having worked for Nokia for two and a half years before that on all the internet tablets, and Calabro subsequently <coughs> working on the N900 and a few others. Um, most of the things I've come up with, uh, come up against, sorry, and also uh, when I started at Nokia, I did make a fairly concerted effort to hunt down all the other phone and consumer device X trees I could find and see just exactly how other people had pushed them. Um, I tried to find all the other patch sets again for this talk, but sadly they're all in all the SDKs tend to be hidden behind the beware of the leopard sign and downloading you know, one gig of someone's SDK in a raw file didn't seem like a great idea at positive so um, this is mostly the stuff from Nokia that I've had direct experience with and what I remember from looking at rubbish patch sets about four years ago so the first problem is that X isn't Wayland um, Wayland's guiding design principle is that every frame has to be perfect. Um, everything that gets presented to the screen is exactly what you want to see. There's no tearing, there's no sort of intermediate frames, being that, you know, you resize and window gravity kicks in and sort of shoves your content somewhere else and then you redraw your contents and all that kind of thing. So if X was Wayland, it'd be great, but it's not, so here we are. Um, window reconfiguration is the hard one. When you're resizing and moving windows, you're almost guaranteed to get god-awful results between start and finish. Random reconfiguration is 
absolutely horrible and that's been a large chunk of my life I'm never going to see back again. Uh, video doing it correctly is very hard. Our server implementation, it was written by people who generally don't care about this kind of thing. Um, composite does fix most of these problems, except that sometimes you don't want it. Um, on ARM devices, we're often extremely limited by memory bandwidth. So if you need to do a double copy, generally your UI just gets hideously slow. Um, so you need to dis enable and disable composite on the fly, and it turns out that enabling and disabling composite results in your screen looking rubbish in the meantime, while flashes of black and other misc. Um, the initial and final presentation of the server when you start and shut down is fairly ugly. Um, especially when you shut down, you kind of get all the windows undecorated in some random order, and then you get your nice little... <laughs> And then you get your nice little shutdown screen that we paint onto the frame buffer. And everything tears. Right. <laughs> so basically all of this is fixable to some extent, right? It's, there aren't any particular fundamental problems that mean we can't solve it. So, yeah, as I said before, um, everyone hacks it to be shippable. So if you look at the xorg list, there's a bunch of people saying, I've got this tiny problem, how do I fix it? Generally, there's not much good advice forthcoming, and from the patch sets I've seen, they hack around it in the worst ways possible. And, yeah, thankfully for them and their sense of shame, it's generally really hard to find these patch sets. But it's also bad because it kind of perpetuates the problem. And, yeah, the ones you can't find are probably even worse. So, ideally, we'd be able to fix this stuff up so people who want to use X in a mobile or consumer device can just install it and ship it, and they don't need to spend four months looking at code going, I don't know what this does, but it flushes black, so I'm going to comment it out and hope for the best. Right, so Randa comes first by virtue of being the worst offender here. Um, it's built on the assumption that you never want to change screen size, which seems odd for an extension which exists to let you reconfigure your screen. <laughs> um, it's built on the assumption that all you ever want to do is, say, plug in your projector every now and again, or change size sort of once a week or whatever. Um, but it turns out we need to do this fairly frequently. There were, it seems to be less popular these days, but suddenly a few years ago, a lot of people tried to make games and they were ridiculously slow, so they just resized the screen to roughly half. Um, and in the N900, we switch between portrait and landscape quite a lot. So when you start the phone application, it does a rotation transition. And this used to take was it like three seconds in the worst case? Yeah, so it could actually make you miss your call because by the time you've rotated into the phone <laughs> UI, they've given up. Um, and yeah, the current implementation is just an absolute sledgehammer. Something changed. By God, let's redo the entire thing. Um, in order to rotate, I think you previously had to do had to re-lay out all your visible windows six times, and re-layouting in GTK still takes approximately forever. Um, so that was quite deeply unpleasant. And it's sort of exacerbated by there's no single render entry point that you can say, here's my new screen configuration, please make it happen. If you want to rotate, you have to disable the CRTC, then change your screen size, and then re-enable the CRTC with rotation. So if you're doing sledgehammer reconfiguration at each step, then it's pretty awful. And it also means that if you want to re rotate 
and you're doing a nice whizzy transition between portrait and landscape, you have to have a natural black point in the middle where you can disable your CRTZ, quickly rearrange everything and then turn it back on. Um, we used to... It was a nice sort of gradual sweep between portrait and landscape, but uh, luckily we changed the transition so it's, it kind of flips around and then it goes black very nicely and everything happens under the garden and then it comes back up again. And it's also built under the assumption that no one actually ever wants to rotate. Um, rotation is generally punitively slow. And it works by having a shadow buffer and then every now and again when we have kind of done with clients and we get around to it then we do a rotated flip into the transform space and this is partially because there are very few devices left with hardware rotation engines so it was designed for the desktop which has no hardware rotation and even on the desktop it's unusably slow Right, and composite switching between the two modes is fairly punitive. If you want to switch between composited and uncomposited, you get flashes of black and then <coughs> background and then other and misc. Um, saying don't do that then is a really attractive argument. I spent about four months saying don't do that then, but sadly in the end, really for performance reasons, we do need to be able to switch composite on and off pretty much at will. So, yeah, you have to do it, which means we have to fix it. In, It's largely hackable around from the client side. Um, it's spent about a week or so, and the transition between composited and non-composited is now seamless on the N900, but it's really not obvious how to get to there. Right, window reconfiguration is, again, fairly awful. Um, luckily, you don't tend to do it that much in the mobile world, which is really nice, but basically it's specified to look hideous in between <laughs> start and finish. Um, you've got your backgrounds and bit gravity, which basically guarantee incorrect frames. When you resize something and stretch it, it's going to move around the contents for you. It might be painting the background for you when you bring a window back up. And that doesn't really give you anything useful. All it means is that you get a flash of grey. And apps, it's partially the application's fault. Um, for example, on the Xterm application on a certain unnamed mobile device, I'm not going to name it because it's otherwise perfect and I don't want to slander its good name, but if you set a black background for the Xterm, it still leaves the window background as white. So when you bring it back up, it's going to go white, black, Xterm. Right. And that looks awful. Um, so when you're reconfiguring windows, especially if you're trying to move and resize windows at the same time, which we do when we transition between full screen and not, uh, as we've got a title bar along the top, um, then you basically need to be using composite during this stage. So if you're in uncomposited mode, what you really need to do is get into composited mode and try not to cause artifacts there, reconfigure your windows, under the curtain, wait until they're all done, paint the contents, and then back out of composited mode again. And yeah, all apps and toolkits are ridiculously stupid here. Um, they do all the wrong things, which is partially our fault for never telling them what the right things are, which is partially X's fault for often not having the right answer. Um, but they really do make our life difficult here. And if someone wants to fix GTK to be smarter, please do. But, yep. Uh, are you going to document what the right thing is? Then? Yes. At some stage. Yeah, what, I'm what? trying... I've got the entire MIMO patch set, which I'm going through now and cleaning up and trying to get out. And 
also to document sort of the pitfalls that we've encountered and how to work around them from the client side. But that sort of relies on someone doing it, so hopefully they do. Um, yes? Can you name some of the worst problems and, and proper solutions for, for stuff that GDK is, is doing wrong? Or any other toolkit you're, you're intimately familiar with? <laughs> some, some, <laughs> no, some, no. One or two, the, the worst, worst ones. The, the main one I find absolutely infuriating is using a background and, oh, sorry, telling X that you have a given background colour and 10 points for having the background colour you tell X not be your real background colour. So, as I said with the X term thing, if you set the background to black, when you bring it back up, it's going to flash white as X paints the background the apps have told us to paint, then it'll flash black then you'll have the X term. That's the main one that really irks me. But a lot of them are... Yeah, I'll, I'll have to sit down and dig up my notes. And, yeah. But I'd, I'd love to coherently yell at the GTK people. It would be very good um, Window managers are also fairly dumb. In fairness, this is mostly our fault because it's impossible to write a really good window manager. Um, you just can't really do it. But a lot of the window managers are, sweet, I've got an event, I'll chuck that on the screen right now. And then if it's sort of got about five events in a row, it'll do that five times in a row. So you'll get five intermediate frames instead of batching them up and going, I'll wait until we can present something useful. So, this does seem to be getting a little better, but it's still fairly dire. Window managers just present exactly what you tell them to in order, which is not what they should do. Is there an exception with Enlightenment? I've never used in. Oh, I've not used Enlightenment since 1999. With E17, it's a frame based window manager. So, it's not going to render. Whenever you want to update, it's going to render on the well on the screen to be just going to be if you have something to render. Well, oh, okay. Enlightenment may actually be the way forward. Um, <laughs> you think that gets released out? Yeah, a any day now. Do you still have a Shortly bug under when you Sorry? Do you still have a bug when you close applications because your X window down, you don't have control of it and then it so just do whatever he wants. Nice. Um, don't close applications, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so even when you've fixed up all these little niggles in the X server and stuff, it's probably still going to look awful unless you've got a friendly toolkit and browser rendering engine and app and other app and other app author around you where you can say, you're doing this, please make it so. Oh, please fix it. And when you tell them that, usually they say, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. I think I'm telling X the right thing. And basically, everyone to the pub. Right. Video is pretty harsh as well. Um, so we have overlays, which have usually the most hideous color you can think of, a very tasteful lime green. Um, Incidentally, when I was about five, I used to always change my mother's background to lime green and the rest of the colour scheme to fluorescent colours. And she, she didn't smother me somehow, which is amazing because every time I play a video and I see colour key, it's ridiculously jarring. Um, so thankfully, we have texture video going through the 3D engine instead of overlaying, but 3D engines, especially in mobile devices, will tend to use all the power in the world. Um, overlays are extremely efficient with power and throughput. Textured video, not so much. But it does mean that you don't have to have the colour key. You can use it um, in other parts of your UI instead of just having your video right on top of the screen and nothing else. But, yeah. So, if you very, very carefully use the API and make sure that the XV API and make sure that your 
order of operations is excruciatingly correct. So you always start video and make sure it's there and then paint the color key behind that. And then when you're done, always paint something other than the other B color key that you want to show and only <coughs> then stop your video. Then you can almost not show a color key. Um, I say almost because sometimes X will stop your video for you and the colour key is there and there's nothing you can do about it. So that would be nice to fix at some stage if someone video happy wants to look at XP. That's probably, that's probably why they use a colour key that is closed and flat. Frequently some people use a colour key close to black and then you pop a dialogue up over your video and your dialogue is sort of half a video. <laughs> it, it, it is a kind of ghetto transparency, I guess. So. Um, but yeah, most people really don't take much care in how they sequence it. They just say, oh, cool, XV, this is really easy. Start video, stop video. And in the meantime, you've got the colour key flashing everywhere and sort of chunks of green over here. And it's deeply unpleasant. Right, so... Tearing is starting to be a very big problem for us as well. Um, previously, going back a few years, you had kind of QVGA sized screens and very much static UIs. You pressed a button, something would happen, that was it. But now we've got huge screens, the, um, the N900 and most of it, all of its predecessors are 800 by 480 and everyone wants nice, busy animations all the time, and, you know, your background is kind of water ripples, and, you know, you press something and you get a nice little animation coming up, and everything's great. But unfortunately, this means that you're almost certainly going to have tearing, so your animation mostly consists of huge, jagged, ugly lines going right through it. And also, you're probably texturing from the entire planet. If you press the upper left window switcher button on the N900. Um, it'll do a very nice zoom out and a gradual blur over the background and it'll show you every window you have. So it's actually starting to get complex and dynamic enough that we're hitting tearing quite badly. Um, so your two options are either you fix it or you never ever do a horizontal animation, ever. Um, yeah. If you happen to shift backgrounds with very strong vertical lines and then you can move them horizontally all the time, turns out this looks horrible and you should never shift that. Um, but luckily, DRI2 makes it possible to avoid tearing properly um, with the swap buffers stuff, which has just been merged to master and will be in the next release, then you can sync everything properly to be blank and avoid that. So that's been something we've been working on for a while and it's fully supported and working now in the Intel driver. So admittedly that is only on your desktop, but yeah, you can <coughs> avoid tearing now. Already 2010. <laughs> in fairness, we're only 30 years behind here. Mm. It's an improvement, <coughs> right? Um, <clears throat> so those are the sort of more... <coughs> more fundamental issues which we can't really fix without bumping the protocol or becoming whaling. Um, there's a bunch of much smaller little implementation issues uh, which we can fix relatively easily. So the first one being the initial presentation when you start the X server. It's not the root weave anymore. We don't show that nice little black and white X cross cursor anymore. So we have got there, but the problem is when you start something up, it'll give you a very nice little swing animation, there'll be a corporate logo, it'll be very sort of relaxing and calming, and then the X server will pop up and just smash black all over the screen or similar. So a fairly popular hack is to let X take a, an image file as a background, and Hopefully it's the same one as you've been using for the rest of your startup animation. Um, and we should probably merge support for that. I've got that on my to-do list because I've seen that 
at least 10 to 20 different patch sets where people have uh, put in support for having an initial background file. Um, again, same problem with shutting down. Uh, this is partially not X's fault because people tend to kill the window manager and then X, which is quite provably the wrong answer. But shutting down X, you tend to get undecorated windows all over the shop and then you get your nice gentle shutdown animation. Yep. Well, I was thinking about the frame or the, the background image thing. Yep. Um, what about grabbing the current image from the frame buffer? Yep. Grabbing the current image from the frame buffer is a very good choice as well. It's a much better choice than the most impressive one I've seen, and I'm not going to say who it was originally. It was um, It would start the X server, which would clear the background, and then in parallel it would sleep for almost exactly as long as the X server would take to start up and clear the background, and then a tiny bit of slack in there, and then repaint the same thing back over from user space. It looked awful. Um, grabbing it from the user space does make a lot of, uh, from the current frame buffer makes a lot of sense, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you want it to actually be something useful rather than, say, the current text mode console or whatever. So that's kind of a more difficult one. Um, Server-side cursor rendering isn't great. Luckily, we don't need to use cursors very often in mobile devices, but it almost kind of works on the desktop, but it's slow enough on uh, mobile devices such that, especially if you're using a particular browser which likes to repaint its entire <laughs> screen all the time, um, you just get the cursor flickering horribly. It's quite jarring. Um, so... I've got a patch set which allows client-side cursor rendering, so the compositing manager can just paint the cursor when it paints the frame anyway. Hopefully that's the way forward. Um, yeah, it's also <clears throat> impossible to debug rendering issues. So if, if someone looks at something and says, shit, black's popping up here, or you know, part of my window popping up here and it shouldn't be, then how to get from there to actually fixing the bug is really not clear at all. Um, partially because the whole client-server separation with pretty much zero debug tools for that whatsoever makes it a bit tricky, uh, partially because the server's hard to debug anyway, and yeah. So there are <coughs> Xmon, Xspy, Xscope, and about a million others that will tell you exactly which commands the client's sending over the wire. So far, I've not managed to make any of them work. Um, Xscope, I think, will work for about three minutes and then randomly die. Um, so one of the things I have on my to-do list is Xscope that actually works, including telling you exactly what you're painting to whichever target you want and exactly what provoked it. So yeah, that's the Joe Prone problem. Um, as I said, yeah, toolkits, not great. Browsers, um, Gecko is quite terrible. It's, yeah, I don't want to get into that, but don't use Gecko. Um, but then it's impossible to prove without any useful traces. So I can show up to the browser guys and say, hey, your rendering is rubbish. Can you please make it less beautiful? <coughs> and they'll say, prove it to me. Show it to me exactly what we're doing wrong. And then you kind of slink away with your tail between your legs. And that's pretty much all I've got. It is a short talk because, in theory, Eric Hanholt, if he's somewhere, is going to be talking about Cairo GL. I don't know where he is, so that's great. Um, does anyone have any questions in the meantime? Yep. So, given all these problems, why would you say it's X or the 